Welcome back to the Dark Souls Armor series. I'm Marcus and I'll be your guide today. This video covers the armor sets listed as special sets on the Dark Souls wiki.wiki. If you're looking for other armors or for rings, use the annotations to navigate. Also, check out the website in the description for a more organized layout for this guide series as well as some other cool stuff. First off, we have the Golem Armor. It's available from Donald in his Firelink Shrine location. Uh, three of the armors available in this video come from this merchant, so this is the only time I'm going to show the way to get here. Uh, remember, you need to ring the Bells of Awakening to trigger his move here. It does not matter if you talk to him in the depths or not, it doesn't matter. In any case, if you come here after you clear Sin's Fortress, you can buy this armor. This is just another heavy set with high poise. Uh, the whole set actually has a lot more poise than you really need, so consider just wearing individual pieces as necessary. I personally really like the way the helmet looks, and I think it fits nicely with some combos, uh, especially if you're trying to hide your disgusting, disgusting hollowed out fucking face. Next up is the Iron and Sun set of Solaire. All you have to do to get this set is kill him. Kill him at any point and he drops it. But I recommend that new players wait until your final encounter with him however, as he is a useful summon for several fights that give new players trouble. If you did not rescue him using the Chaos Servant shortcut, then he will be hostile here in Izalith. I'm showing you the path from the Bed of Chaos Gate. Now, if you don't care about him as a summon, you can kill him at the very beginning of the game. It's totally fine. You can pick up the set right from the beginning. Wearing this set, you may or may not be dressed as the exiled firstborn son of Lord Gwyn. I personally think Solaire is the firstborn, but FromSoft loved the trolls, so we can't be sure. I may make a lore video about this topic in the future that discusses why Ornstein and the other usual suspects are not strong candidates. On the topic of Ornstein, after you defeat his super form, you can buy his armor from Donald. To fight his super form, you have to kill Smo first. When you're fighting Super Ornstein, stay close to him. He only has two moves that can hit you. He only has two moves that can hit you if you stay close. One is the jump up butt slam. Just roll away quickly. You want to have a fast roll speed, but roll away quickly and you can escape the butt slam. The other is his jump back spear slash. For that one, just roll forward. He has an unblockable spear thrust, but it cannot hit you if you stay close. So just stay, just assume the standard giant circumcision position, SGCP, and you'll be totally cool. If you're having just a ton of trouble with him, you can always summon another player to help you kill him. If you do summon another player, before you enter the fog gate, send them a message saying that you want to kill Smo first. His armor looks fucking cool, but it doesn't have that red plume like it does when he wears it. It's decent right out of the box, but you can't upgrade it. Ornstein is quote unquote believed to be the captain of the Four Knights. Since FromSoft rarely throws unnecessary words into item descriptions, you should kind of, I don't know, just take it as you will. Could there have been some tension, some quarrel amongst the knights over who should be the captain? And could it have led to... Okay, I'll say no more. You guys can figure out where I'm going with that. The Paladin set is gained by defeating the invading phantom Leroy and the Tome of the Giants. Before you kill Nito, you need to go here in human form. Only under these conditions, Leroy will invade you. So you need to be human, and Nito needs to still be alive. It doesn't matter if you summoned Leroy to help you kill Pinwheel or not, but uh, do be very careful of his Wrath of God near the cliff. Oh, and Grant. <laughs> he can hit pretty damn hard. He actually reminds me a lot of Garl Vinland. Anyway, after you beat him, you can go fight Nito. Kill Nito and the armor set can be found in Nito's boss room. 
If you kill Nito immediately after Leroy, you may need to reload to get the armor to appear. And I've also heard that you can use the Grave Lord Covenant shortcut to get to the armor from this room without killing Nito, but I've never tried it. In this armor, you are an undead champion of the Way of White. I think it's also worth mentioning that this armor is quite good. It's got good poise, it's got good defense with a reasonable weight, and it offers curse resistance too. On top of all that, it looks fucking cool. So this is one of the best sets in my opinion. To get Lawtrek's Armor of Favor, you need to follow four steps. 1. Don't kill him early in the game. Whether or not you free him from his prison does not matter, just don't kill him. 2. Loot the Black Eye Orb from Anastasia after you open Sin's Fortress. Sometimes you can loot it before you open Sin's Fortress, but it doesn't matter because you can't do anything about it until An Orlando. But when you open Sin's Fortress, go loot the Black Eye Orb from Anastasia's corpse at Firelink Shrine. Three, use the Black Eye Orb to invade and kill Lawtrek in the hall that leads to the Ornstein and Smoe fight in Orlando. Be careful, this invasion can be a tough fight because it's a 3 on 1 and you cannot use Estus Flasks. Either use the stairs to separate them or just burst Lawtrek down. Once he's dead, you fucking win. 4. Finally, after you kill Ornstein and Smo, the Armor of Favor can be found on the balcony in their boss room. If it isn't there, you may need to reload once to make it show up, just like always. The armor is more or less an inferior version of the Paladin set, although it is slightly lighter. The arms on the chest piece represent Fina's arms hugging Lawtrek, hence he is called Lawtrek the Embraced. The set of thorns is another missable set with several steps needed to acquire it. You need to defeat Dark Wraith Kirk in three locations to unlock this set but he will only invade you if the area boss is alive and you are in human form. Once again, the boss has to be alive and you have to be in human form. The first invasion is in the depths near the area with the cursed lizards. The second is in the demon ruins in the area with the legion of Capra demons. And the final is in Isolith, near the boss fog. After you defeat him in all three locations, the armor will appear on the strange looking wall in the Chaos Covenant room. If you roll into an enemy while wearing this armor, they will take damage. However, there is a nasty glitch to be wary of. If you don't have enough strength to use your weapon with one hand, you will be stunned when you roll into the enemy. 
Even if you're holding your weapon in two hands, this will happen. This will occur. Something good to note about the Thorn Set though is that it does do a small amount of poise damage so it will stagger a poiseless player or enemy. More usefully if for PvP, if a player has just, just enough poise, exactly enough poise to withstand one of your hits without staggering, then it means you will be able to cause a stagger if you connect with a roll and a hit in quick succession. This armor also has other odd properties like increasing fist weapon damage. Kirk is interesting from a lore perspective as well, as he is actually a member of the Chaos Covenant, not the Dark Wraiths. Perhaps he is notorious because he abandoned them, I'm not sure. Either way, it was confirmed via developer interview that he is collecting humanity for the Chaos Covenant, hence the reason he invades where he does and why his corpse is found where it is. Smo's set is purchased from Donald after defeating Super Smo. To fight Super Smo, kill Ornstein first. And since I've already shown this location a million times now, and you guys know how to do this, no problem. This armor's got high poise and defense, but it's very heavy, and it also cannot be upgraded. But it is Miyazaki's favorite design, so that's something. Wearing this set, you are the executioner of An Orlando, and you eat your victim's bones. Try Susan in that shit with some Tony Saturies. The Dark Set is gained by getting to rank 2 and the Dark Wraith's Covenant. To do that, do not talk to Frampt after you get the Lord Vessel. I repeat, do not talk to Frampt after you get the Lord Vessel. Instead, get the Covenant of Artorius from Sif, get the Key to the Seal from Ingward, and then kill the Four Kings. You will then meet the Darkstalker, and you can join the Wraiths. Give him 30 humanity, and the Wraith set is yours, and that shit takes fucking forever. This set is worn by the former Knights of New Londo, the cursed city that has fallen to darkness. And finally, the Xanthus set. This is found in the painted world in An Orlando. To unlock the painted world, you need the peculiar doll from your cell in Asylum. You can take the crow to get back to Asylum. Once you're in the painted world, you must go to this specific area while in human form before you kill Priscilla. Once again, Priscilla needs to be alive and you need to be human. Jeremiah will invade. Kill him and then the set will appear in Priscilla's boss room. Once again, you may need to load to get it to appear. The head wrap, for those of you guys who are wondering what that's about, is actually a Demon Souls reference. It's kind of a throwback. And it's one of those things that convinces some players that there's a connection between Demon Souls and Dark Souls. I'm not too sold on that because FromSoft has always had reoccurring items in their games. You, know, you can look at the Kingsfield series and even Armored Core for examples of that. In any case, if you trade the head wrap to, or the crown, the Xanthus crown, whatever it's called, if you trade it to Snugly, you can get a Ring of Favor. And that concludes the armor series. Uh, actually, the next Dark Souls Guide video that I make will be the introduction to the armor series. Uh, at that time, I will explain poise, and I will explain stamina penalties, and I'll also show off some of my favorite sets for looks. And future videos will include the Ember Guide, which shows the location for every Ember and explains upgrades. And also the Weapon Guide that will show how to get every weapon in the game. I am busting my ass to get that put together for you guys. But for now, check out the amazing pick that Eshi made of Shampoo Fighting Sif. This is badass. 
Uh, a cropped wallpaper version is up on my site, and the full version of the pic can be found on Eshi's Deviant Art page. Crazy awesome stuff. So check Eshi out, and I'll catch you guys on Tuesday with some tactics and hopefully another Dark Souls wallpaper, albeit a little bit less awesome one because it's being made by me. <laughs> uh, Eshi, you're amazing, dude. Later, y'all. I hope you have a fucking fantastic week.